Welcome to another video. First, I want to apologize for not providing the same editing quality with it like you're used to, but unfortunately I couldn't finish my crafting leveling video for today due to the script and theory crafting being quite intense, so I needed a kinda light-hearted break through making a more simplistic video. Still, the crafting video will be up soon, so stick around and let this video emphasize your motivation to get done some crafter leveling. And I'm truly aware of the fact that I cannot provide you with a rank 1 FF lock status like other content creators may. So therefore let me try to share with you my knowledge about gil making. That means I'm going to try to expand your horizon about your market behavior and why crafting is the ultimate requirement for getting hoarded some gil, without burning yourself out by gathering the whole day or spending all your time to endlessly grind all sorts of currency. With a keen market sense you could also do this without crafting, but the easier way definitely leads us to having most DOH jobs leveled up, so if you got some hype from this one stick around for the crafting video to come up. Nonetheless, when did my gill grinding journey start it? Right after Heavensward when I leveled Desperia as my second character, turning her into my new main until now. I figured out that I wanted Weaver, Armorer and Leatherworker to be able to craft some chocobo bardings and some simple and normal quality crafting gear. And by just doing that repeatedly and constantly, I got my first 120 million when Stormblood was launched, just by crafting the Heavensward crafter gear in normal quality. And all sorts of inexpensive chocobo bardings like the Vervana, Bismarck, Shiva barding or the many of the other basic ones that require low level ingredients and no heavily expensive Shinryu scales for example. So I avoided those from Servan and Sophia in the first place, but when reaching some solid gil values I did those as well. But Des, why did those normal quality crafter gear work so well for you? Just for a simple reason. Sometimes people just don't want to spend 20,000 gil for getting an upgrade for just a single piece of gear. So they are looking for opportunities to still get an upgrade while not spending too much. Therefore I used to be the only person crafting those normal quality stuff and just threw it in there for half the price of the HQ one. Or sometimes even below that for around about 5 to 10k gil per item. Sounds like nothing at all, but selling two or three whole sets of gear nearly each day will make the deal in quite some time. Just for another simple fact, I haven't spent next to nothing to produce them. Crafting normal quality items don't require you to get a solid gear level, material melts or requires you to achieve any form of knowledge about crafting rotations. It's just simply clicking it and crafting it with two or three clicks, which decreases the time you need to craft a new set when the old one already sold. Furthermore, all the materials that I spent were so cheap, I haven't even put them into a thought of investment. So this directly leads us to a very important tip I want to provide. Buy out materials when they are cheap, even if you don't need them right away. Many people are gathering all the time, and if you like to do it, go for it. I remember to enjoy some good old thorium gathering routes in Eastern Plaguelands in the good old days of Wrath, which also got me some wealth in WoW. But on the other hand, just by weaving a single finger at your retainer or the market board to buy out stuff, it is still much more efficient and that already works out as long as you're able to transform that currency into something with a higher value. If I spend 10k gil for a 99 stack of wool and silk or whatever that I need 2 or 3 for each craft, it's a big increase of value each time I turn this into an equipment piece. And this is as simple as it gets. The materials for these bardings were ultimately inexpensive as well, so I went a kinda safe way to fight myself into a solid pool of gil before hitting the true gil making endgame in Stormblood. And really guys, I know this video could kill some market prices, I'm sorry about that. But my guesses are that you can still apply the same logic and procedure to recent Shadowbringers gear even with the multiple new options of spending yellow scripts. There will still be some people to get their hands on the normal quality version. The best option would be anything that people can level with, for example check all the prices on all sorts of crafter or gathering gear that is below endgame levels and if the prices of the HQ stuff are too high craft a set of normal quality gear, cut the price by half and wait for it to get sold in no time. It should definitely work especially when I upload my crafter leveling video. Just make sure that you compare the prices of materials needed so that you don't invest tons of these. Ok, another thing that always works be it World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy or Hello Kitty Online. I'm not sure if this still exists and if it has a market system but yeah. The real market endgame, like it is true endgame in every aspect, is glamour. Can you provide anything cool to the board without spending tons of gil to craft it? Then go for it. There may be popular ways like those amazing Shinryu weapons, but spending 1 million or something around it for the scales is just a too risky investment for me personally. Nonetheless, go downwards with that idea. There are still people looking for the old Ramu weapons with that lightning touch to them or stuff like that. It just depends on whatever you find cheap on the materials department and how much the stuff is sold by how many people. My wife literally made her first 100 million just by continuously crafting these primal weapons and she hasn't spent the whole day of doing it. Just after logging in, 
checking out retainers, which one has sold, crafting it, getting it back onto the market and here we go. This applies to most things in general. Once you got up your crafters, got all the possible recipes and some decent gear, you're good to go and spending some minutes each day to get rich. The same applies to all sorts of glamour that is kinda revealing. You got anything that frees up some naked skin on your Mikoti's belly, this will sell like hot stuff. A short skirt, a revealing tight with burlesque aesthetics, go for it, people will buy that. A nice armor that you don't see that often, if materials required are cheap, craft it. At some point, someone will buy it out. There are tons of different things to sell on these matters, so don't hesitate to hop onto any glamour piece that you consider to be interesting or could imagine someone to use it for a specific set or something. Of course, this crafting of multiple things require you to establish a solid capital and without the acceptance to invest even the small margin, this won't work. So try to get a decent wealth just by doing your daily work of currency grind. My best recommendation still goes for A rank trains that supply you with tons of materia just by receiving stellar clusters or anything else. On the other hand, you don't need those phantasmagoria tombstones anymore? Then just exchange them against all sorts of crafting materials. Even when you don't find a simple use for them by not having unlocked a certain crafter job that needs them, just go for it as you will reach that point someday and you will find yourself in happiness that you already bought some of these in advance for currency that you would have kept or wasted otherwise. I personally stockpile all kinds of materials. When time returns that new Ish Guardian items will get back their true value, which will be in patch 5.3 without any doubt, but more to that topic in a preparation video for which I need some patch notes. And this directly leads us to the big seller with that I made 1 billion in Stormblood, recent fighter gear which in the recent time of creating this video would be the Neo Ishgardian pieces. Yes, yes. I know, they are cheap as hell and you cannot get a true profit by making them. But back in the days of Stormblood, leveling up crafter jobs and getting done certain endgame crafting rotations was way more difficult than it is now. So the pool of people having access to all crafting jobs being leveled up, be maxed out with gear etc. was immensely smaller than it is after the crafting system revamp and the introduction of Ishgard restoration in Shadowbringers. To level up a crafter and get it done for endgame crafting, you were definitely required to invest some gil back in the days of Stormblood. So this changed quite a lot and this heavily affects the value of certain items that you can craft now. But like always, market prices are defined by supply and demand and if some people will lose their motivation over the fact that these pieces are falling out of place and maybe on the same time people will return to the game and will need those 480 pieces to catch up to unlock recent content, things are getting interesting again. And the goal behind this video, I know it may have a substantial impact on the market now, but this will also calm down again, like always. This video shall help you in getting the fitting mindset for the next patch. I don't need that gil anymore, reaching cap a single time burnt me out from the endless hunger for gil. As long as I'm still saturated with some hundred million. So it's your time to shine guys, I want you to get a certain in-game wealth as well, as it makes many things much less complicated. So here is what happened in Stormblood. I literally spent one week of my semester break to catch up with most of my crafter jobs, mainly for the fact of being able to pentamelt my whole equipment. For having maxed out the level of all your jobs was a requirement to do that. So I leveled Carpenter, Goldsmith and Alchemy to 70, which took me quite some time and a lot of gil and leaf quest allowances to get it done. At this point I reached the state of being a full Omni crafter that offered some very important advantages over having two or three jobs leveled up when it comes to building crafting rotations. At that time I also had been an active follower of the German YouTuber Charles, who produced a vast amount of crafting content which I really liked and as the patch came that brought 350 fighter gear, I wanted to hop into that business as well. At that moment I literally had an epiphany, as Charles gave up on these 350 pieces due to the annoying fact that people are permanently undercutting and it seemed you had to update the supplies your retainer offers nearly each 5 minutes. To this point, even when the market was oversaturated with these pieces, prices were absolutely okay and I just kept my patience to update the prices after each duty finder content I took part in. Or after some weeks I only did it 2 times in the morning and 2 to 3 times in the evening, which to my joy and excitement was still enough effort that I needed to spend to get them sold. And through constantly hopping onto that market I made around 700 million in 5 to 6 months just from the fact that others gave up on this part or just haven't done it on a regular basis, like doing it on a daily routine. Yet the most important thing is to have access to all crafters, which still is relevant, for example crafting leather worker gear, you need weaver or armorer materials as well, while always needing certain great flasks that an alchemist can produce and this goes with nearly each job except culinarian maybe. So if you really want to grind down your first billion or just one or two hundred millions, I highly recommend to get used to these tips and especially level your crafting jobs. 
I hope that above the stupid flexing this unintentionally contains, you could learn some tips about the general market board awareness. Or you can make use of some of these tips so that the next patch will be the perfect spot to increase your in-game wealth significantly. If you liked it, consider to check out my other videos, especially the crafter leveling video when I finished it, and also check me out on Twitch for all sorts of live chatting and content clearing that's taking part in Final Fantasy XIV content. Thank you for watching, thanks a lot to my patrons, and until next time, take care, stay healthy, and keep loving Final Fantasy.